Welcome on in. It's time for another edition of Friday Night Lights. I'm Mike Fenner, and we're here to bring you an exciting slate of high school football in the state playoffs. That's right. I'm Ashley Kaiser, and the game of the night is where we start with McDowell hosting State College this evening. To Gus Anderson Field, Brad Orlando's Trojans looking to avenge a 57-50 loss last year to State. Now the Trojans starting things off with a 33-yard field goal from Alex Sotheimer. It's three to nothing. McDowell, 649 left in the first here. Second down and seven for State. Owen Yurka, the ball carrier, is taken down by Aiden Propes. Down to the three-yard line here. Blaze Myers hands it off to Stefan Porter as he drives it all the way in for the first touchdown of the night. Nine to nothing. Trojans as we move into the second quarter. Eddie Cork Corkery fires the pass down the right side. It's a 19-yard touchdown. Pass to Ty Salzer. Little Lions are on the board, 9-6 to six. McDowell. Now on the five, Myers going to call his own number here, driving the ball into the end zone for a McDowell touchdown, making it 15-6. to six. Trojans with the lead, and they'll do it again. Here's number six, Dominic Baraducci, plowing his way through the defense for another touchdown. The kick on this one's good as McDowell pulls away 23-6. to six. Corkery shuffles to his left here, looking for an opening as he's firing it to Cooper. Brushwood just barely makes it in there, but it's good for a State College touchdown. 23-13, McDowell still leading. Second and nine on the 12 there. Myers sends the pass out intended for Matt Herb, but it's intercepted in the end zone by number 10, Michael Gall. At halftime, the Trojans have a 23-13 lead over the Little Lions. McDowell goes on to defeat State College 47-20. Very timely with these guys. I thought they played their best football game. Um, you know, I thought we were really going to have to throw it around a little bit tonight with uh, as good as they are against the run, and the game plan changed a little bit. We just kept that thing on the ground. Offensive line was, was blocking uh, great, and our backs were running downhill. Uh, just a great game. We definitely circled this game on our calendar, knew we were going to have to face this team eventually, and uh, we just had a lot of preparation into this game. We're, we're really uh, confident in our team right now after a dominant win like that. Uh, we're still going to keep competing every game and uh, hopefully we can keep going. And I feel good right now. It was a good vengeful win from last year and I just I couldn't be any more happier right now. On the Plyler Entry System scoreboard, the McDowell Trojans take care of State College by a 47-20 final. McDowell's moving on to the state quarterfinals in Class 6A. Big time win on the home field. Another home game here in Meadville. Ray Collins Bulldogs hosting Juniata in the Piata Delay 4A football first round rematch from last fall. In the first, Juniata quarterback Wyatt Aaron Zeller floats the pass to his running back, but it gets picked here and taken away by Meadville's Ryan Reichel, who returns it past midfield. Bulldogs with the football. No points on that drive. Scoreless in the second. Bulldogs back to punt. Errant snap. Ball's going to be down here near the goal line, but the Bulldogs' D would hold. And now backed up again. Another long snap results, this time in points for Juniata. In the end zone, it's a safety and a 2-0 lead for the visitors. But points would eventually come for the dogs. Brighton Anderson picks off the pitch, and he races the other way. 80 yards to pay dirt for six, plus the point after. 7-2, the Meadville lead after that terrific play. But Meadville sees their season come to an end. 21-7 the finals. Juniata comes back and wins this one over the Bulldogs. And let's go to Farrell High School. District 10 3A football championship. Hickory and Sharon all Mercer County championship. As we get to the action here in the second, scoreless Tigers, Tigers get on the board. Mr. Ham powers in for the three-yard TD. PAT no good. Sharon up 6-0. Late second, Hornets answer back. Xander Telez follows suit, muscling in for a three-yard score. 7-6 lead for the Hornets. Stayed that way up to the fourth. How about this on defense? Ham back to pass, but that one's picked off and taken back. Jaden Phillips takes it to the house for the pick six as Hickory increases the lead to 14-6, and that would seal the deal. Hornets get the D-10 championship by a 14-6 win, and that pick six, a huge play to help seal that one. And looking at high school football for Saturday action, Mercyhurst Prep takes on Farrell for the District 10 to a championship. The Unbeaten Lakers are coming off of a 49 to nothing D10 semifinal win over Sharpsburg last week. The Steelers enter at 10 and 1 for a matchup set to take place at Meadville's Bender Field tomorrow at noon. Coach Jeff Root team is in the D10 finals for the first time since 2017. 
I just think staying staying fresh and adversity, right? You know, we haven't faced a lot of adversity this year, so our kids are going to have to respond. If we if we get down by a score early, you know, we haven't had that all year, so we've got to really keep them focused on, listen, just continue to do what you do. Good things will happen. We've been explosive all year. It's all, you know, anytime we touch the ball, we can take it. Our mistakes from last game, our offense wasn't really doing well, but our defense was, we didn't really have many mistakes on defense, but it was just offsides. We can't be doing that enough championship. And for offense, we need to work on moving the ball more, moving it faster. We've really been excited. We really want to be here. Coaches will talk about we'll be here since camp days, and, like, we really work hard to come here. In the District 10 2A Football Championship, Mercier's Prep takes on Farrell on Saturday at noon. This one's happening at Meadville's Bender Field. In the District 10 Class A Football Championship, it'll be 11-1 Cambridge Springs taking on 9-2 Lakeview in a rematch of the Sailors' 28-22 win at Cambridge earlier this year. That's a 7 o'clock kickoff Saturday night at Meadville's Bender Field. All right, let's shift gears, talk soccer. The Cathedral Prep boys are set for their third state championship appearance in program history on Saturday night in Mechanicsburg. The Ramblers take on the Springfield Township Spartans Saturday at 7 p.m. in the PIAA 3A State Finals. Coach Sam Toyega's Ramblers avenged a state semifinal loss from a year ago by topping previously unbeaten Hershey 1-0 in overtime Tuesday night in Johnstown to punch their ticket to the state final. My last message to them was, not to sound harsh, but it's an ARF business. It's been great, but we got to finish it off. We have to finish it off for, for just all the work we've put in. Special. We, we, we've played with each other since we were at least six years old. And we just, we, this wasn't going to be our last game. We're going to end Liam with our last game with a chip. So we know what our destiny is. I just know that I'm very comfortable back there with my defense. They're playing great right now. Uh, the forwards are playing amazing as well. You know, we're all doing our part in the midfield as well. They're playing amazing. Our part, everyone's doing their part to just help us get to the state finals, which we are. We started, like I said, in the beginning of playoffs, start at D10, and to be able to go through here, push with this team we love, and be able to accomplish everything we want to, and be able to go to state finals, it's a dream come true. In boys high school soccer, it's the PIAA 3A state championship in Mechanicsburg. Cathedral Prep taking on the Springfield Township Spartans Saturday night at 7 p.m. On the Plyler Entry System scoreboard, Gannon tops Mercyhurst in rivalry women's college soccer. The NCAA first round matchup in West Virginia. Maddie Endler scored the game winner for Gannon with just less than 15 minutes to play. Gannon is at host Charleston on Sunday at 1 o'clock in the NCAA second round. Meanwhile, on the Plyler Entry System scoreboard, Gannon defeating East Stroudsburg in five sets in PSAC women's volleyball Final Four semifinals. Gannon won the deciding set 15 to 10 to move on to Saturday night's PSAC Women's Volleyball Championship match.